Hey guys, welcome back to Autotechnic. And in today's video, we're back on the jet boat today. We're gonna to be working on the fuel tanks, completely changing the way they're mounted. We need to work on getting them reinstalled, but this time they're gonna be removable and serviceable. Okay guys, before we jump in and start talking about the fuel tanks in the boat, I've been giving this some thought, kind of contemplating it for a few weeks, and I finally made the call that I need to get the boat turned around here in the shop. All the work that I'm doing is really towards the rear of the boat, and I just don't have much space to work back here, especially when we're talking about getting the intake set back in and all the work I have to do back on the transom. I'm really just fighting this wall. There's not much space, and I don't really need the bow up here in the center of the shop where I have all the space. So looking back, I probably should have just done this in the first place, but I didn't anticipate moving it at all once it was coming off the trailer. But as you recall, I had to go ahead and kick the back end over because I needed clearance to get the stringers out. And I really just wish at that point I would have spun it around then, but you know what? It is what it is. So is what I plan to do is I'm gonna leave it on the three orange jack stands to get the boat moved out of here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and I need to push this car out of the way and I'm gonna rob the casters that are the dollies that it's on. I'll place those underneath the jack stands that are holding the boat up and I should be able to push the boat out in the driveway, spin it around, and get the bow of the boat tucked into the corner. Before we jump into these fuel tanks, let's go ahead and get this thing spun around. I wish I would have just done this from the start and spun the boat around. I really have a lot more working room because I was able to stuff the bow further up into the corner and also getting in and out of the boat, everything is back here in the middle of the shop. I just have so much more space. It's gonna make it a lot easier when I go ahead and get the pump set back in where I can go ahead and get the engine set up over in here to get the engine remounted into the boat. Should have done it from the start, but now we got it to where it's in a good position so we can move on and keep working on the fuel tanks. Okay, before we talk about how I'm gonna mount the fuel tanks back into the boat, let's discuss how they were mounted when I removed them. Now, they were mainly fiberglassed in. So you can see the outline on the tanks where it had the tabbing that ran along the bottom and just an L to the boat. And then it had two fiberglass straps. Um, you can see them equally spaced up that ran up and over the top into the back of the boat. All of this was covered with carpet. So you can see all the old glue residue on the tanks. So we had carpet up on the floor, up over the tank and over the top. So the way the tanks were held in with the fiberglass was fine. It was sufficient. It held for 50 years. Since it had carpet up over the tanks, it didn't matter what it ended up looking like. In addition to the fiberglass holding the tanks in, there was a small piece of wood back there that's cut to match the angle of the transom that goes off to that bracket. And then there's just two screws that went into that wood into the transom. And they also had this three quarter inch plywood up here acting as a bulkhead, which helps locate the tank, but there's no hardware there holding it in. In addition, these were only tabbed in on one side, which was actually causing a crease the form on the outside of the boat on the gel coat. So I have already taken those out. I just have them in there now for mock-up. We're gonna completely redo all of this. I don't wanna fiberglass the tanks in. I wanna clean them up and make this look a lot better. So I came up with a way where I can get these tanks mounted. It's gonna look a lot cleaner, a lot better. I won't need the carpet over the tanks and it's gonna look really nice when it's done. So if we're not gonna fiberglass this tank back in, you're probably wondering what my plan is to go ahead and get this installed. So let's run through it real quick. I'm gonna keep this front bulkhead. That clearly needs to be there to help hold the gunnels and the sides of the boat up and also help locate the tank. I'm gonna remake it so it fits better and we're gonna tab it in on both sides so we fix the gel coat issue on the outside of the boat. In addition, I'm gonna place some hardware here on this L bracket on the tank to go ahead and secure the tank into the bulkhead so it doesn't wanna slide outward. On the rear, we're gonna make a new piece of wood but keep this exact system to go ahead and mount it here, except I'll take the new piece of wood and I'll fiberglass it to the back of the transom and make sure that it all looks as one piece and I'll find appropriate hardware that goes through these existing holes into the new wood and secures the tank there. 
Now, another thing to keep in mind that's gonna help hold the tank in position is we have our fuel filler up here to the neck, which you can see it's a very short run, a very short piece of hose where it comes down, and that's gonna kind of help hold the tank as well and prevent it from wanting to move. So those are all existing things that we're gonna leave there or improve to hold the tank in. Really, the big changes are two main things. We're gonna change the way it's held on the bottom and the top, essentially replicating the way it was held in with the fiberglass tabbing, except we're gonna use different materials for it. So my plan is to take this inch and a half aluminum angle, we're gonna cut it to fit and have it hold the tank in here at the bottom. So this is gonna keep the tank from wanting to move outward and just kind of help take some of the stress off of the other hardware that's holding the tank on the front and back. And it's gonna essentially makes a little like pocket where the tank will slide back and in and sit into. So even without the hardware, the tank's not really gonna wanna move very much. But in addition to this aluminum bracket, I'm gonna take another piece of this angle and weld it to the top of the tank. We're gonna make a mount and adhere it to the back of the boat and it's gonna go ahead and have hardware that bolts that in and that'll be on both spots where the tabbing used to be. And in combination with those holding the tank on the top, where it doesn't have any room to move because of the angle on the bottom, where we're held in with the front bulkhead and on the back of the transom with the fuel filler and hose, I have no worries about this tank wanting to move or shift. The added benefit is it's gonna be completely removable. So if I ever need to remove it and service it, it's gonna be pretty easy to take care of and get the tank in and out. And it's gonna look a lot better. So before we really jump into this and start making the new bulkheads and the angle iron, I need to finalize the position of the tanks. So that means I need to get the fuel fillers in with the fuel hose. Now, I am replacing my fuel fillers and my fuel hose. So I'm gonna take you guys to the bench because there's something I wanna talk about before we go ahead and get those installed. Okay, here's what I wanted to cover. Here's my old existing fuel fillers with the old beat up hoses. And it's pretty obvious why we're gonna replace the hose. We're not gonna worry about putting an old one back in the boat. Fuel fillers aren't too bad. These are chromed pieces. The rubber seals on the top were given out and they were leaking, but I've opted to go ahead and replace them with some nicer, newer stainless steel items. Uh, I had some of the chrome flaking off on these and chipping and in combination with the seals. I already had them out. I've gone this far at the boat. I'm gonna go ahead and dress them up with some nicer caps. Now, the thing that I wanted to address with you guys or talk about is if you notice, there is a substantial height difference in between the two caps. They have the same bolt pattern, everything's the same, the outlet diameter is the same. So I need to go ahead and cut about three quarters of an inch off of the new stainless cap, so that way I can get these installed and get the tanks mocked up. As tempting as it is, don't grab your old fillers, don't use the old hose, don't install them into the boat to do the mock up. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take a couple minutes and trim this to get it to fit. I'm gonna have to cut my new hose to get it to fit but now is the time to take this step. You don't wanna do this when the boat's all assembled, everything's polished, painted, your interior's in, because if you need to make some changes on the fit, you might be undoing some of the work you've already done. Now is the time to take the hardware that's gonna be in the boat, make the hardware fit, the tanks will be mocked up and held in place with the new hardware. That way, if there's any unexpected differences or changes on this stuff, I can catch it now, I can address it now, and I don't have to worry about it in the end. Now, it does seem like it slows down the project a little bit at this time because I need to get the new fillers to fit, but on reassembly, it's gonna be a lot faster because I know everything fits. I've already worked through all the problems. It's just gonna drop in and bolt in. So before we can go ahead and get those tanks in position, I need to go ahead and cut some off these fillers, get the fuel holes cut, and get the, both these fillers and the tanks installed, and then we'll go ahead and continue forward. All right, so the new fuel filler is trimmed and placed into the boat. And I actually had to end up removing that front bulkhead. And is what I have, as you can see, that I pretty much have no clearance in between the two pieces. I still have plenty of space here to get my hose clamps on and have a good seal. I have enough room on this filler on the tank to go ahead and make a cut, trim some of the top of this off. I'll still have plenty of area down here to get the fuel hose clamped on and a good seal. But I want a gap in between these two. I don't want them touching. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the fuel tank out. I'm gonna make that cut and then I can get my fuel hose cut and in here. Okay, that was a perfect example of what I was talking about earlier with the fuel tank where I had to cut a half inch off the top of the filler in order to get it to fit with the new fuel fillers that I had. 
Even though those fuel fillers, I shortened them, I still had an interference issue. It's the perfect example of why you wanted to do this stuff with the hardware that you will be using and not the old hardware, even though it seems easier. Because when I go to assemble this boat the final time, I won't have to worry about that. I know I've made all my adjustments now and I won't run into any issues. It's just reassembly once I'm done with all the mock-up. Now, I went ahead and got this tank mocked up as well. And I was able to just kind of set the tank in here, get a feel for how I wanted to cut the aluminum angle and also the same problem with the bulkhead. It fit so poorly on this boat that I couldn't get the tank leveled with it in, so I just took it out. I'm gonna make new bulkheads, but I'll need the tank out of the boat to get those templated out and cut and fit. I did mark the sides and the floor of the boat so I can go ahead and position them in there and I'll start working on the new bulkheads. I'll take the tanks out and I would like to go ahead and get the rest of that glue from the carpet off. So same thing I used on the floor of the boat. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit those with some gooby gone let it gum up and I'll scrape that off and get the tanks cleaned up. Also, while I have everything out, I'm gonna take the angle, I'm gonna cut them, and I'm gonna cut them an inch short of six feet. So my tanks are six feet long, and the reason why I'm cutting it an inch short is because that's gonna give me a half inch buffer on each end of the tank right here, and you can see that this corner is welded. I don't want this sitting on that weld and rubbing on it, I want it on this base metal of the tank where it's all the same surface. So by cutting this entire piece one inch shorter, I can be half an inch short on each end, which is gonna clear that weld for me. In addition to that, I'm gonna round the corners on the edge, edges of this angle, and I'll clean those up. So I have multiple things I need to do before I can put everything back in the boat and start working on the final fit. All right guys, it's day two of the fuel tank install on the jet boat, and as you can see, that fuel tank is looking good. It is a huge difference just after I went through and got all of the old glue residue off that tank. There's still a little bit of old fiberglass resin stuck on it in a few places, but we're gonna address that a little bit later on. But man, what a difference it made. So I also have my new, two new bulkheads made, so you can see that they're in there and I have both the tanks positioned with those bulkheads. The old ones fit so terribly, it wasn't even worth going off and using those as a template. So I just made new templates out of cardboard and completely new bulkheads. Tanks are in and positioned again. Now, when positioning the tanks, you don't really have to measure, make them equal side to side. The way that they're positioned and held in, essentially is the tank is held in position by the fuel filler. I have such a short run on that hose from the filler to the inlet of the tank, that dictates the tank position. The bulkhead position, you can see, is determined by the front flange of the tank. So essentially, I get the tank in position, which positions the bulkhead, and then everything else follows suit after that. Now on this tank over here, you can see that we already got the angle cut and it's mocked up in there. I got the corners rounded and I have that aluminum angle sitting flush on the outside of the hull of the boat and then I have those wood shims in there so that way they're trying to hold it 90 degrees to the fuel tank. So I'm not going to lay that flat on the floor because if I did so that angle would be leaning inwards on the boat and not perpendicular to the fuel tank. So when we go ahead and install that aluminum, we're gonna have to shim it up just like that. And I'll show you how I'm gonna address the gap on the front side and get that adhered to the boat. Now that we have the bulkheads made, and if you noticed, I've already prepped behind them and already laid a layer of the vinyl ester resin back there. So you can see it's nice, wet and shiny. So since I have the tanks in the position they need to be in, the bulkheads are already cut the fit and I've already applied that vinyl ester resin to the back edge of the bulkhead where it meets the boat. So the next step is to go ahead and get these bulkheads tabbed in. Now, as we just discussed, since this tank is locating that bulkhead and it's holding it in place, and I'm gonna go ahead and tab in just the front side of both bulkheads and let that cure up, they'll be held in tight and then we'll come back and glass in the back side once everything's cured and I'm able to pull the fuel tanks out. So just like I did with the stringers, we're gonna use some of that fiber filler, fiberglass putty, get a nice round radius corner on these bulkheads. I'm gonna get them tabbed in. I'm gonna use one layer of the eight inch wide 1708. So I'll have a four inch overlap on each side. And then I'm gonna do a second layer of a four inch 1708 over that. So it's gonna have a two inch overlap and that's gonna be sufficient by the time I do it on both sides. So while I'm waiting on the fiberglass on the bulkheads to get cured up and dry so I can continue working on the tanks, I'm gonna take the time and go ahead and attack this aluminum angle that I have for the fuel tanks that's going on the floor of the boat. As you can see here, I've ordered a kit from Renegade Products. It's their aluminum mini kit. It works in conjunction with my existing eight inch Makita polisher. 
and is what it should allow me to do is give this aluminum angle a mirror show finish polish. Now, you might be wondering why I'm gonna go ahead and polish this angle. That's because the end game here is we're gonna polish the tanks. So previously, like I mentioned earlier in the video, the boat had carpet that went on the floor up and over the top of the tanks. I didn't like it. I figured this is a great opportunity to improve the way the tanks are mounted, but also it's gonna give me the opportunity to get them polished up and spruce up the back of the boat a little bit. So I do have quite a bit of experience polishing cars. I have some experience polishing aluminum, but I've never polished aluminum on a eight inch polisher with an edge wheel like this on this scale. So I'm interested to see how this works out and see what kind of finish we can get. So what I need to do is get the wheels hooked up onto the polisher, get this set up into the bench vise, go ahead and take a couple passes on it and we'll see what kind of product we're gonna end up with. All right, that turned out being a much messier job than I anticipated, but we had pretty good results with polishing out the aluminum angle. Now, one thing that I did notice when I was polishing it was there was a lot of mill marks in this uh, angle and I was hoping that I would just leave them there and polish it and it would look good, but it turned out that it really didn't look very good at all. So I had to end up and sand down the aluminum angle and the finest grit that I had to sand it here in the shop was 320. I really wanted to go after it again with some finer grit sandpaper over that 320, but I didn't have any and I, I didn't really have the time to go get more sandpaper to sand it. So I was just left with the option of polishing over it. So these aren't absolutely perfect, but they came out really nice. You can see it took me a little bit while to wise up and realize that I should just vice grip them together and polish the two of them together versus how I had them separately in the bench vise. Um, that definitely sped up the process quite a bit and made it quite a bit easier to polish it but it came out really nice. These are gonna look good in the boat and it's what I was looking for. Before I go any further with these is what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and lay this blue painter's tape over the face of them because while I'm working on the rest of the boat, I wanna preserve this finish and I don't want anything to happen to it. Although I anticipate coming back and touching everything up once it's done because inevitably something will happen. Also, in addition to that, when I have these in the boat up on the tanks, I don't want them metal on metal to the tanks. So I ordered some of this foam here, and this is a oil and fuel resistant foam with an adhesive backing. And I will probably go ahead and split this. It's two inches wide. I'll probably split it in half and run a one inch wide strip on the top of these angles with this foam. And that way I'll have this little bit of a cushion in there to hold the fuel tank in. These angles are not meant to hold the fuel tanks tight into the boat. My thinking is just, they're there, they hold the fuel tanks, they keep them honest so that way the fuel tanks don't want to have any tendency to go outward and just to help really, for me, the feel that they're more secure. So I'm not worried about them not being butted up against the tank. It's more so if something were to fail one of the other mounting points and the tank wanted to shift, this aluminum angle is going to help prevent it from coming out. All right, with those aluminum angles protected and with the foam pads put on, let's go ahead and crawl on the boat and cover what we've done and where we're headed. So you can see the bulkheads are glassed in, tabbed in with the eight inch wide 1708 and then the secondary tabbing with the four inch. And also I tabbed it on both sides. Now previously these were only tabbed on the front side and they didn't even do full coverage. I really went and tabbed them at every point that I actually could. And you can't see it because this plastic wrap is on the boat, but when I pull it off, I'll show you guys later, but there's some creases um, back here on the side in the existing gel coat from the previous bulkheads there. And the reason why is because the bulkhead didn't fit very flush at the outside of the boat, then they didn't have it tabbed in. So it wasn't really secure with the boat or one as the boat. It was a rigid piece that kind of had some movement in the boat. So because of that, it had some pressure points up here on the top where it was hitting. And then that over time has put some creases into the gel coat. So I really wanted to put some effort into it to be sure that these are tabbed in, they're very strong and structural, and I won't have any issues with my gel coat down the road. So you notice I got some old carpet laying right there where the fuel tank sits. I'm doing that as mock-up carpet because I don't want the fuel tank to sit directly onto the fiberglass bottom. So I just took some old carpet that was in the boat, cut it, and I'm gonna use that to sit on the tank so that way when I mock everything up and put it in the position, I'm taking into account the carpet that will be there. If I don't decide the carpet, the part of the boat that you'll see, I can just leave carpet under the fuel tank and you'll never see it. And it, just a good, cheap, easy cushion. 
When I removed all the carpet from the boat, I was hoping to save it, but the rubber backing actually pulled off and pulled the felt off, so none of it was savable. So it's perfect for this type of job here now. Now on the angle, you can see I got the foam on them and they're protected. And I also hit the bottom with a grinder to rough them up. So that way we can go ahead and adhere them to the bottom of the boat. And on this side here, everything's mocked up. So I have the tank sitting in place. It is sitting on top of the piece of carpet, just like the other side I showed you. I had to go ahead and do some trimming on the fiber lass up here on the bulkhead because of this flange. It just didn't have enough thickness to account for it. So I've done that. I have the fuel filler neck back in and the tank is positioned. I've already went and prepped everything on the tank that I need to now because I plan on doing the, all of my fitting of all the mounts now and there'll be some additional fiberglass and epoxy work that we'll be doing. And I don't wanna to have to pull everything back out to prep it. So everything on both sides is completely prepped. Now on this aluminum angle, I'm not gonna have it flush to the boat. Um, that's because the bottom of the boat is not level right here. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this inside flat to the floor of the boat. And I'm going to roll this up like so. So that way it's going to be 90 degrees to the floor of the boat, which is going to give me a gap on the front edge. But I'm okay with that because right now I'm planning on putting carpet in this section of the boat. And when I do so, I can actually run the carpet up underneath that edge and it'll look like the angles floating on the carpet. And it'll actually turn out pretty nice and clean, I think. Now to get this attached to the boat, we're going to hop back out and I'll show you. Um, when I originally thought up this game plan to get this installed on the boat, I was actually thinking to use this seagoing poxy putty, which is the putty that you use to set your pump intake into the boat. And I figured if that's strong enough for a pump intake, that's going to be absolute overkill for this aluminum angle, which was perfect, exactly what I wanted. And so I ordered this with the intentions of using this for that. As I mentioned in the boat, since it doesn't sit flat and I have to take that angle and lift it up a little bit, which leaves that gap on the inside edge. Once I actually got everything positioned and I was able to look at what kind of gap I had and the quantity of material it was going to take to fill that, I started second guessing this poxy putty. Certainly it's going to be a fantastic item to go ahead and bomb those on with. Right here is what you're looking at is $80 worth of that poxy putty. And I just did an eyeball assessment of how much poxy putty I was going to have to use and the cost of this poxy putty. And I decided that A, it's overkill and B, it is expensive. That was going to be a very expensive way to attach the aluminum to the boat and absolutely overkill. So took a pivot and I've decided to use the Sikaflex 221. And this is basically like a polyurethane um, sealant or adhesive specifically made for marine applications, wet applications, it adheres wood, fiberglass, um, plastics. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. This is substantially cheaper. It's probably gonna be a little bit easier to work with. Now I've used materials similar to this on other areas of the boat before we did this restoration to hold like bilge pumps in and other small brackets to the boat. And I know that it's incredibly strong and it holds real well. So I don't have any doubts with this holding those aluminum plates on and really worst case scenario, if this ends up failing, I can always just pop the gas tank back out and clean it all up and then go with something a bit more aggressive. So now I need to figure out how I'm going to go ahead and get this in place without making a huge mess on the aluminum angle. This best solution that I've came up with so far is I'm going to go ahead and position this aluminum angle. I think I'm going to take some of this blue painter's tape. I'm going to go ahead and tape down in certain sections in this angle. So that way the, I know the tank is fully positioned, then I can have the aluminum angle positioned. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to pull the tank out, put in this um, polyurethane adhesive. I can roll the angle back over to where it needs to be and then tape some on the back edge so that way I can keep the outer edge flush with the floor of the boat. I'll have to toss the tank back in and then finalize my height of the angle from the outside and then I'll probably just tape it up to the tank to go ahead and hold it secure. All right, we got both of them set in place and we have that adhesive drying. You'll see that I have those door shims there underneath and I place those under there just to keep the inner edge up. Again, doing everything I can to keep them perpendicular 90 degrees to the boat. And it's gonna take a couple days for those to dry up. So I just gonna leave the tank set in place. As you saw, I put the fuel hoses and fuel fillers back in just to make sure that I had these positioned properly. It's a pain in the butt, keep putting everything in and out, taking the tank in and out, putting the filler in and out, but that's gonna ensure that when I'm completely done, everything's gonna fit on the first shot 
and look just the way I want. So now is what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and hop in the boat and I wanna show you what I have planned to do for the upper mounts. So when I originally came up with this idea, I was thinking to take this one and a half inch aluminum block and I was gonna go ahead and adhere this to the back of the boat and that was gonna give me room to put a nut cert in here to attach this bracket to. So is what I was essentially thinking was this box um, tube would be adhered to the outside of the boat and this angle bracket would be welded to the top of the tank and then bolted in and that's gonna allow me to take the tank in and out and remove it. Well, that was the concept in my head. Once I came here and looked at it, I quickly realized that if I were to do that, just right there you can see that I would not be able to get the tank out. Because of the strip that I just put in, the tank either needs to lift straight up or I need to roll the back side of the tank out to get it removed from the boat. And with this sitting right there, it just wasn't gonna work. And I eyeballed it with moving it up and even if I had it all the way up here, it's very, very tight. And I realized that although a good idea, it wasn't gonna work in reality. So up here is what I came up with with the solution is I just, you can see it's essentially three pieces of angle. I'm still going to go ahead and weld this bottom piece to the fuel tank. I'm going to adhere this other piece here to the back of the boat. With this additional third piece in the center, it's going to allow me to go ahead and unbolt it from both pieces. And then I'll have plenty of clearance to either lift the tank up as needed or roll it out. And the main thing that I was trying to be sure that I did was have this angle right here that's welded to the tank free and clear of the one on the boat. So you can see if I just lift straight up, it's not gonna interfere and hit it. And if I roll it forward, again, not gonna interfere. So I'll have plenty of space when I do this. And when they go in, they're just gonna sit like so. And good tight fit to the back. I did have to bend the mounts that go to the, the boat so that way they fit flush and they sit in there real nice. And I have plenty of room. They get the hardware out and get them unbolted, so it's gonna work out really nice for me. Now to adhere those to the back of the boat, I'm going to be using this. It is 3M panel bond, and this is specifically for the auto body industry. Uh, very common to use on newer cars to glue the panels back on. So a lot of OEM manufacturers actually want the body shops to do this, and they still do some spot welding, but it's mainly this bond, panel bond. It's stronger than a weld, it's stronger than the metal. Um, if you glue two pieces of metal together and try to flex it back and forth, it'll actually break the metal and not break this bond. And the benefit for that is it's also waterproof essentially, so you don't have to worry about if you're welding two pieces of metal together, having rust in between those two um, pieces of metal, this essentially seals it. Now I have this left over from another project and I do know that it also works really well on plastics and glues obviously metal. So it's a great solution to go ahead and bond these outer pieces to the side of the boat. Now, the reason why I didn't use this for the bottom angle is it's really expensive. It won't give me enough buildup for what I needed down there, and I don't need that much strength for what I'm doing down there. On these upper pieces, I wanted more strength. So I need to go ahead and jam a new tip onto this. I'm gonna apply it to the backs of all these, and then I will go ahead and just tape this foot down and press them back and let them sit. And I can go ahead and let those mounts cure up as the bottom cures. Once everything's cured, we'll come back and address the top of the mounts on the tank, the front bulkheads and the wood on the rear bulkheads and wrap up this project. Okay, we've given it just about 24 hours for everything to go ahead and cure up. And although that's not the ideal or total cure time for the products that we use, specifically the polyurethane on the bottom, I'm hoping that's gonna be enough to allow me to continue working these tanks and to finish these up today. So I've already pulled a couple shims out and you can see that this angle is pretty firm. It is gonna have some flexibility when it's fully cured, but it's firm enough 
to where if I need to go ahead and pull the fuel tank out or do anything else, I'm not going to disrupt the work that I did yesterday. So that's good news there. And that was my main concern. This panel bond holding these on is definitely cured. Those are really firm. So I'm good to go from there. My plan of attack before I really get any further with these fuel tanks is I need to go ahead and mark on the fronts right here where the hardware is going to go through into this bulkhead to hold the fuel tanks on. Once I have the hardware on the front of the tanks sorted out, then it's time to address the angle on top of the tanks and get those secured to the tank. All right, I got pretty good access in here, much better than I anticipated with my torch. So I may go ahead and tack weld them in and I'll probably pull the fuel tanks to fully weld them. That is unless I feel that I just have enough space and things are going well, I may just weld them all the way in from here. Now I'm not worried about any fuel vapor in the fuel tanks. These have been sitting for six months with no fuel in them. And also I went ahead and before I had these in, I pulled these caps and blew them out with compressed air for quite a while to get any last vapors out. So we should be set. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get these tacked in and we'll just see where it goes from there. Well, I had space to tack weld them in, but I wasn't able to hold pressure on that aluminum angle as I was tacking them and the heat from when I was starting to put into the aluminum was causing them to lift up. I cut them off, tried it a couple times and I just decided that it's gonna be easier to get these tack welded um, up on the bench with the fuel tanks out. So here we are again, popping the fuel tanks out one more time. Um, also, this time's gonna be a bit of a moment of truth for us because I do have this one bracket tacked in and this will be the first time that I've had to remove the fuel tank with the bottom angle in. So we're gonna see how easy this is going to be to get this fuel tank out. So we'll pop all these brackets off and we'll give her a shot here. Now, one other thing that I ended up having to do that I didn't mention is because this side of the boat and the fuel filler cap and the outlet of the tank are so close, I cannot get my fuel hose off with the tank in. Previously, I was able to leave the fuel filler hose on the tank as you saw me do during all the mock-up and slide the tank in and out because I could just pull the tank out flat. But now, since I put the aluminum angle in, I can't just pull the tank straight out. I have to lift it up a little bit. And the problem with that filler hose is I don't have enough room upward to lift it up before it hits the boat. Now, none of that's a huge deal, but is what I had was the fuel filler hose was too large an outside diameter to fit through the hole of the top part of the fiberglass on the boat. So I had to grab the die grinder and go ahead and enlarge this opening right here. So now I can take this filler and slide it up through the top and I don't have to deal with it. So this kind of goes back to what I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this video is where you want to mock everything up with what you're using because it's stuff like that that will come and bite you when you go to reassemble it or pull the fuel tank out. And it's really just best to use your existing hardware. That way, if there's anything like that that you just didn't anticipate or mentally plan out and you find it, you can take it into account as you're building everything in and it doesn't, it's not going to bite you. Um, that's something I would have been pretty annoyed with to find later on when I had everything wrapped up nice, clean, and, um, you know, considered finished. So, I 
Now we'll see if we can get the tank out. So I need to basically tilt it out on the top and get it away from the top of the boat and then slide it up over this angle. It's pretty tight right here, so that's gonna be a little harder to do it. But, oh. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, let's get this on the bench and get these angles welded on. Okay, I got one tank welded up and to be honest guys, even on the bench, I still struggled with the angle. Once I started to make the weld and put a little heat, the tank would dip down, the angle would lift up, and I'd end up with a big gap. So I tried to power through and weld the other tank up that way, and the welds just didn't come out very good. So now on the second tank, I put a little bit more time into it to try to solve that problem. And you can see that I took this old screw jack, which anytime I have a car that I send to the junkyard that has one of these screw jacks in the spare tire kit, I always take them. I keep as many of these around the shop as I can. And mainly I keep these with the intentions of using them whenever I'm setting up frame and chassis, because since the screw jack is so adjustable and you can have such a great control over the height of the jack, they're great for leveling a frame out for suspension work. Well, because I had a stock pile of them, I had the idea of grabbing that screw jack and basically wedging it underneath my bench and my cabinets to hold my angle down while I go ahead and weld it. And hopefully this is gonna alleviate the problems I had on the other tank. So I'm gonna set you guys down, grab the torch, see if I can buzz a weld on there and see if this idea works out. Well, I made it about halfway through welding the second tank and I had to pull the plug. I had my TIG torch let go and losing all the shielding gas out here at the end, so. I guess it's time to retire this one and order myself up a new torch. And until I get that replaced, that's the only one I have. I can't really resume on that tank. But luckily I got this other tank in and we can go ahead and cover everything that's done and what the finished product will be. I'll just come back and finish the second tank once I get that other TIG handle in. So you can see I got the bolts in for the front mounts and the way I did that was with a stainless steel T-nut that I embedded on the back side. You can see that I don't have this one in but I used a spade bit and drilled out that outer diameter of this T-nut so that way it would sit flush and not be touching the tank. I didn't want any metal and metal contact on the tank, but then when the bolt comes in, it's gonna pull that nut tight and it's gonna be nice and secure for the tank. So you can see that these just thread in. I don't have to deal with the nut on the backside. It's not a wood screw, stainless steel, so I don't have to worry about corrosion or rust and a pretty good, clean, simple solution using the existing bracket. Now we already talked about the mounts that I made up top and welded those on. One thing to mention, if you guys don't have a welder or the ability to get those welded on, you could do this exact same setup that I did. And the panel bond that I used to adhere the outer mounts to the side of the boat, you could use the exact same thing to hold the other mounts to the top of the tank and it's gonna work just as well for you guys. So I chose to weld them because that's what I had. Didn't know that I'd have my torch break and stop progress tonight, but it is what it is. The rear mounts are pretty much the same. Um, I'm just remaking those with new wood. I kind of stopped because I was gonna do those last when both tanks were done. But what I'll do is I'll trim these to fit so they're small. I'm gonna go ahead and fiberglass them on this side, refiberglass them back to the transom, and I will tab them in. And just two wood screws will go ahead and hold those in on this back flange. So the tank's gonna be held on with those two screws back there on the transom, the two top mounts and the bolts up top and the aluminum angle just to keep it from wanting to slide and move, you know, holding it and keeping it honest, in addition to the fuel filler. I'm confident that the way I have this tank set up is absolute overkill and that it's not gonna move and I won't have any issues with that. The only concern that I have that I kind of realized as I was putting this in are these mounts up here. If you remember me mentioning on the bulkhead where it was installed incorrectly and left creases on the gel coat, I was kind of wondering if I'm gonna have some issues with the tank because it's such a long tank and as the boat flexes, it's so secured now versus how it was with the fiberglass. If that is gonna transfer this flex in these upper mounts and either cause a crease onto the gel coat or potentially crack the top of the tank. I'm toying with the idea of installing like a nylon washer or a rubber washer in between these two mounts and the adapter piece that's on the back of it and I would probably leave these bolts mildly snug and put some Loctite on them so they don't back out. 
that allows some shift for the boat as it's moving so that way I don't have that issue with um, any cracking or stress marks. I'm not sure. Um, why don't you guys jump in the comments and let me know. Should I leave these rigid or should I go ahead and put those spacers in and make it kind of a semi-floating deal? Uh, I didn't really have to worry about it last time so it was just kind of resting in there and kind of encased in with the fiberglass. So trying to anticipate some future problems. I'm not sure what the best way to go is. I want to hear what you guys have to say about that. Now, one other thing I want to show you at this point is I got the carpet here mocked up. Now, I'm not fully decided that I'm going to put carpet on the floor of the boat back here, but if I do, the way I ran that adhesive for this aluminum angle on the bottom, you can see that the carpet just goes and rolls right up underneath real nice and clean. So that's why I left that gap under there. So it just gives it a really nice clean finished look. Now, if I decide not to run carpet, I can come back with some poxy putty or more of that urethane and put a nice radius here on it. And then I could do whatever I decided to do to the back of the boat. Um, my concern with not doing carpet back here and maybe say gel coating it is it's slippery. So if I need to stand back here and work in the water, it's not very conducive for that. Water staining and really the extra time to do it. Carpet seems like the good solution because it's quick, easy. I think it's going to look really good and it's going to be more user friendly if I need to walk back here to do anything. So not fully decided on that. Let me know what you guys think. Should we run the carpet back here? You guys think it'd be better gel coat, paint it, something I don't know. Let me know. All right, guys, that's going to cover it for this video. If you have any questions on any tools, products, materials that I use to get these tanks in, please jump in the comments, let me know. I will keep an eye on them. I'll do my best to get back to you and answer those questions. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel. If you're already subscribed, I thank you for the support. Be sure to keep an eye out on the channel. Next video, we're putting the floors and the bulkheads back in the boat, so keep an eye out. We'll see you on the next one, guys.